Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all the fishing boats at sea. I'm Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And And this this is the Insider Insider Report. Report. So let your ears do the walking as we fill you in on what's going on in the Brookings Harbor area and beyond. beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know. Hiya, Kat. Hey, Bruce. It was so good having you and Jason come to the play on Saturday yeah. night. Good seeing you there. That was classic. Yeah, so. we got to be part of the audience for the Saturday night performance for your pirate play. And and yeah, I got to see Beth and Jr. in the audience. Yeah. I saw, actually, I saw a lot of familiar faces. I was like spending just as much time like networking as I was watching the play. Yeah, no. You saw everybody. Yeah. I know. I didn't yeah. see everybody that night. Everybody yeah. just kind of got the same memo. But uh, yeah, no. We had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was really happy because uh, mm-hmm. a lot of my friends, my gym rat friends came and I had mm-hmm. some, they came to the play just to support it and everything. And one of my tenants came out with his son and did. I mean, mm-hmm. I think every night there was several people out in the audience that How I knew, goes. which is always good. It always yeah. feels good. You know, you know everybody, but it's like your close friends and all that good stuff. It's oh. pretty cool. It's always good when they're out there supporting and everything like that. But it was a fun play. Mm-hmm. After doing it, I realized why I stopped doing plays a long time ago. Well. <laughs> I had to, literally. It's so yeah. funny. I was telling somebody there they go that was at it, actually, that came to the play, and I said, you know, it's funny. I go, I was doing plays, and I was doing fine, and then when I created the paper so that I could promote the plays, it took over my life, and I had to quit doing the plays. Isn't because it amazing how that happens? too busy promoting it then, you know? Yeah, yeah, so... But it was nice to get back on the stage again. I had a blast with my character and uh, didn't have to worry about any uh, garb. I, <laughs> I had all the pirate garb I needed. So that was... hey, it's uh, it's helpful when you can costume yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny as I noticed. I go a lot of the people that go to the pirate festival and everything. They all had their own boots, their their own they... clothes already. It was like we're instant, you know. So yeah. they didn't, you didn't have to dress too many people, you know. Well, if they that'll, went to the pirate festival. Uh, that'll save on a costuming bill. Yeah. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What else did you get into this weekend? Oh my goodness. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, we well, you had the pride thing, didn't you? Uh, yeah, we went to uh, we went to the first ever Crescent City Del Norte Pride down in Crescent City. At the United Methodist Church down there we gave them their parking lot and they had like little like vendors and entertainment in the church and stuff and it was yeah yeah we didn't stay super super long it was super windy but like you know it was nice it was nice seeing uh seeing so many people out there and uh, I saw some familiar faces from Brookings there too and just yeah we had a good time one and, of our members of the cast um Malcolm was there she was yeah, there yeah mm-hmm, it was very cool. mm-hmm, yeah yep. um so saw some cast members down there that was super cool uh yeah no three penny adopted a park recently through the Adopt Park program with the city. So we did our first big work day oh, down wow. at uh, Bankus Park, the, the fountain park that's yeah. uh, that's at the intersection of Grocery Outlet and Fred Meyer. You mean the one they soap up every year, yeah. Yeah, the one that, <laughs> you know, it's really not good for the fountain if people really want it to stop good doing for the that. Pipes at like, all, it's you know, like a tradition, It's I a guess, tradition, but man, is, is it a pain to clean up? Yeah, so I'm bet. like, maybe if people didn't do that, that would be kind of actually but uh, I didn't see it this year. I didn't. <laughs> they've done it this year yes yeah. sometimes it's soapier than others depending I guess on what detergent they decide to use yeah because I see that stuff flowing out all the place <laughs> right Jeez. yeah yeah but I know yeah a few few of us went down there uh, got some invasive weeds out of some bushes trimmed things up a little bit we're just gonna keep doing that on a semi-regular basis so we might announce some work parties for people who need like volunteer hours and stuff and yeah, just generally just go like, let's go, let's go garden for a good cause. There yeah. you go. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, you and Jason, you're yeah, just like, very fun. cool. I'm glad you guys are able to do that. Oh, we just have a proclivity for lawn care projects, apparently. I don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, we can weed. your own yard to play in. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's because we lack a yard. <laughs> oh, that yeah, it fills a need in our life, you know. <laughs> oh, I did real. I thought you did it. Yeah, oh, we have okay. a small yard, but it's nothing, nothing Nothing special. to take over. Yeah, 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 yeah. Renter's life, you know. Mm-hmm. Right on, right mm-hmm. on, yeah. That was pretty much it. It was the last weekend of the play, and we got plenty of stuff to talk about and going on there uh, mm-hmm. for this next week, this whole next month. And July, of course, is coming up and all that stuff. So mm-hmm. we can just uh-huh. go ahead and get going. But before we go, I hope everybody got out there and had fun this weekend. And if you came to the play, thank you for coming and supporting the play. Appreciate it. It was great to see you all there. We had pretty much a full house every night. So that was beautiful. Love it. Yeah. Before we get going here, I'd like to thank <laughs> Oregon South Coast Fishermen, otherwise known as the Castaway. <laughs> Just the Jeweler and Oregon Coast VIP Marketing for sponsoring the Insider Report. If you'd like to sponsor our show or one of the other fine shows here at KCIW, you just got to go to kciw.org and you will be on your merry way. So let's right get into this to some music schedule. All right, to kick things off with the music schedule for June at the Travel Oregon Welcome Center, they have music at 2 o'clock on the 23rd. It's going to be Cisco on guitar. Then on the 29th, Danielle Duran and Nathan Stone. That's a vocalist and guitar duo. Yes, indeed. And then we got Cisco, and he's playing on the 22nd and the 29th at the Brookings Harbor Farmer's Market, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. On the 23rd, he'll be at the Travel Oregon Welcome Center, as it says, 2 to 3. 
And then on the 26th, he will be at the Checkco Activity Center, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. All right. And over at the Elk Valley Casino in Crescent City at their Betty Green Event Center, it's going to be comedian Lindsay Glazer. And then over at the Warriors Bar and Grill, they have uh, some actual music. The 21st and 22nd, it's going to be Jesse Mead. Then on the 28th and 29th, it's going to be Steve Nelson. Yes, indeed. And then Bloodline, they'll be playing on the 22nd at Oxen Free, 8 to 11. And then Mike Powell is playing on the 21st at Checo Brewing Co. Music there running from 6 to 8. And then we've got Disturbing the Peace. They'll be at the Inateca on the 21st at 8 p.m. And P.A. and T. Roy are going to be on the 22nd hosting the Brookings Bodacious Bazaar. They're going to be guest hosts that day. And it looks like music there going from noon to four. Yeah, it's kind of a little something different we've been come up with. Fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Lon Goddard on the 21st, he'll be at Misty Mountain Brewing. He's back from England, I'm sure, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then on the 26th, he'll be at the Coon Tai, 6 to 8. And then the Mighty Steelheads are playing on the 29th at Porta Pints in Crescent City. Music there starting at 730 Yep, and then at the Inateca, as we said, it was on the 21st, they got Disturbing the Peace. On the 22nd, Dumpster Puppies mm-hmm. at 8. <laughs> then on the 28th, The Way Outs at 8. And then on 29th, they have Stephanie Lartour and The Reverbs at 8. And then we have some dates here for summer concerts in Azalea Park. That's kicking off. Uh, so there's a special date, actually, this week on the 19th. That's a Wednesday. Fortunate Gold is going to be playing at 6 p.m., and then on the 30th, they have Afro Blue Grass Band that's playing at 3 o'clock at the Band Shell in Azalea Park. Yep, that'll be Juneteenth. Juneteenth, yep, yep, yep. Juneteenth, yes. Mm-hmm. There we go. Yeah, all right. All right, and now let's take a look at some events from the Checo Library in Brookings. So starting off with some weekly regular events, on Tuesdays at 11 a.m., they have Story Time. That's stories, songs, and simple crafts for young children. And on Saturdays, running through mid-July here at 2 o'clock, they have a creative writing class with Blake Allwood. This is a free weekly class on the creative writing process. And on Fridays at 4 p.m., they have Hora del Cuento. That's stories, songs, and simple crafts for young children, all led in Spanish. And then for some special events coming up here through June and July. On the 19th of June, they want people to know all day the library is going to be closed. The library will be closed in observance of the Juneteenth federal holiday. But on the 20th, from 4 to 6 p.m., they have Gonsango Drumming. In celebration of Juneteenth, the library is featuring West African drumming presented by the Gonsango Troop out of Seattle, Washington. This event will include a presentation on black history and notable black Oregonians delivered by Carolyn Acker of Coos Bay. Then on the 25th at 5.30 p.m., that's a Tuesday, they've got a game night at Checo Brewing Co. This is an all-ages open game night featuring games from the Checo Library's growing board game collection, hosted by Checo Brewing Co. at their brewery on Railroad Street. You can try a game from the library or bring one of your favorites. This is a free and fun opportunity to meet and connect with other board game enthusiasts in the community. Game nights happen regularly every second and fourth Tuesday of the month. And then they have some book clubs coming up on the 20th at 5.30 p.m. They have Pub Grub Book Club at Misty Mountain Brewing. This is a monthly book club for busy readers and fans of graphic novels, and this is taking place at Misty Mountain Brewing at their location on Checo Avenue. Then on the 26th at 5.30 p.m., they're going to have a special event, Tide Pooling and Beach Combing on the Curry Coast. This is an educational lecture. You can join Bill Gorham for an educational talk about taking good care of your tide pools and beaches and get tips for safe tide pooling and beach combing in the area. And finally, to round out the month, on the 27th at 4 p.m., they have Lego Club. Lego builders of all ages are invited to an open building session in the library's youth section. All library-led programs and events are free to attend, whether or not you have a library card. For more information, you can always go and check out their calendar at checkolibrary.org. You can follow them on Facebook for updates, or you can give them a call at 541-469-7738. Okay, now it's time for quotes from famous people with Cousin Bruce. Yeah, hey, we got here a few quotes from the famous architect Frank Lloyd Wright. He was born June 8, 1867. He says, less is only more where more is no good. He says, form follows function. That has been misunderstood. Form and function should be one, joined in a spiritual union. And then here we go. You got study nature, love nature, stay close to nature. It will never fail you. And last but not least, there is nothing more uncommon than common sense. (laughs) 
Hope you enjoyed this week's quotes from Frank Lloyd Wright with Cousin Bruce. Until next week, have a great one. <laughs> well, okay, you can tell I got a new toy. <laughs> I, I was going to say, like, for the listeners out there who cannot see this bright, shiny, red new thing, uh, Bruce got a new sound machine. <laughs> My other one died. <laughs> so uh, you're going to be hearing one. some new sounds, some new uh, some yeah. new cheers and clapping and, and grim shots and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very nice, very nice. My grandson loves it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Tell him not to wear out the batteries. Yeah, <laughs> all right, we want this one to last. Yes. All right. Coming up here is a series of events called Juneteenth, the Family Reunion. So on Thursday, June 20th, from 4 to 6 p.m., as we mentioned, African Drumming with Gonsango Music and Dance Company and Black Organ Pioneers, a presentation by Carolyn Acker, are going to be happening at the Checo Public Library at 405 Alder Street in Brookings. And that's going to, again, be running from 4 to 6 p.m. The library is a sponsor of that. And if you need more information about the Juneteenth Celebration, which is also run by the South Coast Equity Coalition. You can get more info at southcoastequity.org. Yeah, that's very cool. Very yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. Yeah, that's the library is just cooking every month here. You guys I got know, and we've, we've now launched summer reading, and yeah. just it's, 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 it's summer's popping. Yeah, yeah, it is <laughs> every cool. year it's popping, yeah. Mm-hmm. Everywhere, yep. Yeah. Uh, Brookings Harbor Community Helpers is presenting Join the Fiesta. This is happening on the 24th from noon to 2 at 539 Hemlock Street in Brookings. The public is invited to come down for free food, free drinks, free entertainment. You get information on local resources and you can play some games and win some prizes. Free, free, free. Very nice, very nice. All right. I'm 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 really hoping for like some tacos or something. If that's well, gonna say like, so join the BST, I you know. I'm like, oh hey, I mean wrong. it's showing it on the it's showing it on the poster, so yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well here's hoping fingers crossed, man. You'll have it out. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a barefoot beach buggy event happening at Crescent Beach. That's at Enders Beach Road in Crescent City. That's gonna happen on the twenty sixth at eleven AM. Get ready to kick off your shoes, feel the sand between your toes, and dance the day away at their Barefoot Beach Boogie event. Experience nature and boogie to some positive beats with a park ranger and people in the community of all ages and abilities. They will also practice the dance move they made up called the Sand Dollar Shuffle. (laughs) Everyone will be invited to move their bodies freely to the music at their own ability. There's going to be scarves, poi spinning, ribbon wands, hula hoops, and other toys available to encourage movement. You can be inspired by bubbles, be silly, have fun, make new friends, and learn something new. And also an interpretive park ranger will teach you about some cool stuff when they aren't too busy dancing. There's also light refreshments provided to recharge your dancing energy. You can stay hydrated and join the fresh flavored water taste test. They have a rethink your drink activity with flavored water ideas for all palates, including sweet, tangy, herbal, tropical. And it includes a smoothie bike for watermelon cooler. Hmm. Participants can stop at the hydration station and take a ride through water flavors and vote on their favorites. Whether you're a seasoned dancer or just looking to groove to some tunes, this event is for everyone. So grab your friends, pack a picnic, and get ready to boogie down. And hey, now it's time for a bit of weird history with Bushwhacker Bruce. Right. G'day, cat. G'day, mates. Bushwhacker Bruce here, and welcome to this week's bit of weird history for your knowledge pleasure. Did you know that Victorian England had some weird ideas about makeup? It's true, and here's the story. Well, similar to the no makeup makeup trend that exists today, the natural look was often achieved through unnatural preparations, many of them homemade. Modern beauty practices belie the roots of current ideas. To keep the face fresh, they advise that coating the face with opium overnight, followed by a brisk wash of ammonia in the morning. Mm. Oh, for the woman with sparse eyebrows and eyelashes, mercury was often recommended as a nightly eye treatment eradicating the need to use heavy makeup. The look of the consumptive was very desirable. The woman (laughs) with the watery eyes and pale skin, which of course was from the cadaver in the throes of death, to get this near-death look, women would squeeze a few drops of citrus juice or perfume into their eyes or reach for some belladonna drops, which lasted longer, but also caused blindness. (laughs) Pale skin was encouraged with veils, gloves, and parasols, but could also be bought. Sears and Roebuck sold a popular product called Dr. Rose's Arsenic Complexion Wafers, which were just that, little white chalk wafers filled with arsenic for delicate nibbling. They were specifically advertised as perfectly harmless. Arsenic, a natural metalloid found in the Earth's crust, is an extremely toxic compound that can be tolerated for a time when eaten in small amounts and has occasionally been used in medicine. But long-term exposure, however, is extremely unpleasant. Nervous system and kidney damage, hair loss, conjunctivitis, a growth called arsenical 
keratosis plague the body along with, yes, vitiligo, which causes pigment loss to the skin. Arsenic, which became addictive as a person's tolerance built, was used in many forms as possible. We'll talk about beauty coming at a high price. Hope you enjoyed this week's Bitter Weed History with yours truly, Bushwhacker Bruce. Till next time, keep it real, but always keep it weird. I mean, like, I mean, the Elizabethan era had its lead. Apparently, like, teenagers on TikTok are saying now sunscreen's actually bad for you. Don't believe that, people. Just use some sunscreen. No. Like, I mean, like, everybody has their... <laughs> but no, you can't Every you era has their the ridiculous I mean, well, beauty tips. It's right events. up there with bloodletting when you're sick or whatever. That. I know. Oh, yeah, I know. that's what killed George Washington. Man. Right, right. Doc wouldn't quit bl- taking his blood. When you have to ask yourself, is it worth it when it comes to beauty? It probably isn't. Well, you know where the yeah. Mad Hatter came from, right? Yeah. They mm-hmm. used mercury for the hats yep. and all the hat guys, uh, yep. haberdasheries or whatever, the hats, uh, they, uh, they their, were all crazy. Uh, yeah, you know? started going a little yeah. for Cocoa Puffs there. Yep. All right. Yeah, cool. Wow. All right, hey, well, uh, let's get away from uh, that. He's got something that good going on at Three Horrifying Penny stuff and into some fun here. <laughs> yeah. So Three Penny Theatre Co. is presenting a summer cabaret event. This is a one-night only event happening on Saturday, the 29th of June. The summer cabaret features an evening of live performances from their finest array of local actors, dancers, singers, comedians, and musicians from Three Penny Theatre Co., all complemented by a bottomless seafood dinner. That's right, all you can eat from the chefs at the Activity Center. So your ticket includes an all-you-can-eat fish and chips plate, a soup and salad, lemon bar dessert, as well as a beverage of your choice, beer, wine, or soda. And you're also invited to join them at the Expanded Bar for more drink options and signature cocktails. All proceeds from that are going to Checo Activity Center and Three Penny Theater Co. as well. So doors open and dinner services begin at 5.30. The entertainment itself will start at 6. Again, all proceeds from this event directly benefit the Checo Activity Center, which is home to Brookings Harbor's Meals on Wheels program. They also benefit the Three Penny Theater Co., the newest live theater troupe on the Wild Rivers Coast. And advanced tickets are also for sale in person Monday through Friday at the Checo Activity Center, 550 Checo Lane in Brookings. You can also get them online at threepennytheater.com. See you at the show. Oh, sweet. You know, that's what I'm saying. You and Jason, I'm telling you, you just are kicking it into the gear like you took this theater and you went, you were having fun with it. And I, I dig what you're doing for the community, oh, big time, Kat. I mean, as somebody who does something myself, I can appreciate it, you know. It's just fun, like, you know, just experimenting with, let's try new things, you know? Like, that's like, you know, when was the last time we all sat down for some, like, you know, like, dinner entertainment? Let's do that. Like, let's give that a try. Absolutely. Why not? Yeah. And you're helping out other places doing it. You guys are going and helping out Checo Activity Center. They're the ones that do the Meals on Wheels, like you said. Exactly. They're a big organization for reducing hunger in this community. I mean, come on. Let's support them as much as we can. Well, I appreciate what you guys are doing. I can appreciate you big time, like I said. Oh, thanks, Bruce. Thank you. That's right. As an event coordinator myself, you guys are right up there. Let oh, me tell you. Shucks. That make me blush. <laughs> hey, Elk Valley Casino is presenting Jessie G, our girl, is coming back to town. She'll be here on July 6th. She's born in Brookings, Oregon, into a lineage of coastal commercial fishermen. Her lyrics tell stories of love, resilience, and a rugged beauty of life in the water. Tickets are on sale now in person at the Points Club booth or online at etix.com, and you can get them in advance of the day of the event. Doors open at 7 p.m., and the show starts at 8. You must be 21 or older to attend. And seating is a first come and first serve. I'm going to tell you, Jessie is a hometown favorite. Mm-hmm. I remember her singing with us in jazz band in high school. Yeah, we graduated. And when this young lady yeah, came yeah. walking mm-hmm. up to really me at the cool first fire far. festival. Yeah, it's so cool to see how far she's come. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was very cool. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, I, I, it was so cool because mm-hmm. she goes, hey, can we play? And I said, yeah, go uh, ahead. get no. up there and play on the ground <laughs> while we're sitting up behind you. Go ahead and play. And she did, and it was like awesome. She's yeah. We've been friends ever since. She's mm-hmm. an awesome lady. And yeah, really cool person. I just love following her success. I mean, it's so cool. So much. She's a hometown hero over, you know, hometown Yeah story yeah nice great. nice nice gal and i love her grandma peggy i just yeah the girl oh and her whole yeah. family mm-hmm. the yeah, whole girl family nice is people. awesome yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah absolutely well hey at the crescent city cultural center at 1001 front street in crescent city they're having a fourth of july arts and crafts fair so this is actually a multi-day event on july 3rd it's going to run from noon to 7 p.m then on the fourth of july independence day it's running from 10 a.m to 4 p.m There's going to be a special raffle for an original oil on canvas painting by Carol Long. And if you need more info about this event, you can call 
1414. Yeah, and then, uh, hey, of course, as I was speaking earlier, the Insider of Southern Oregon Events presents the Sky High 4th of July and Slammin' Salmon. Sky High is on the 4th, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Enjoy a day at the port leading up to Love Your 4th fireworks display. Local vendors, food, beer garden, live music, kids' activities, and fun for the whole family will be going on down there at the Port of Brookings Harbor. And then on the 5th, the 6th, and the 7th of July, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day, we have the Slam and Salmon Fishing Derby Slash Festival. The Brookings Harbor High School Anglers Club has teamed up with the Insider Events to bring you their biggest fundraiser of the year. The Fishing Derby Slash Festival not only has prizes for the fishing categories, but also local vendors, food, live music, beer garden, and kids' activities. Hey, but you know what's really cool about this is that, um, yeah, we love working with these guys and everything. Wait till you see the outfit me and Junior's got for the 4th of July. Oh, oh yeah. Are you going to flag all it up? Yeah. Oh, we're going to be all paying <laughs> for that. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Yeah, now I'm looking forward to the fireworks show this year. Um, and we love working yeah, with the, yeah. mm-hmm. the, the Brookings Harbor Anglers Club. That. Yeah, that's it's awesome that they've been going for a while now. That, that's great that that's a fundraiser for them. That's so cool. Yeah. I love it. That's just cool. Everything's cool. Yeah. Well, let's get word out here about the South Coast Humane Society, which is presenting their Furball 2024 event at the Brookings Elks Lodge. This is a ways out. It's July 27th from 5 to 10 p.m. It's going to be dinners, cocktails, dancing, a costume contest, a live auction, a silent auction, and much more. They are noting right now, they want to let people know in advance, it is currently sold out, but they encourage people to check in as it nears because they do get cancellations. So for information and times, you can call 760-521-3200. Zero, zero. Yeah. Now I remember what I was going to say. Yeah. The Slam and Salmon, when we did it last year, uh-huh. I know I'd been to them in the past before, but it didn't dawn on me. They never had vendors or stuff like that. You know, all the stuff that the fest, it was just yeah. the derby. Literally the derby. Because I had, yeah, yeah. I don't know how many people came up to me and Chrissy and said, hey, you guys, we've right. never seen it like this before. And we're like, well, it's an insider of Southern Oregon event. Right. Yeah. They all came up and said, hey, good idea. <laughs> and yeah, I'm like, sometimes. In my head, I'm like going, I would. I can't even think about doing any kind of thing without having a vendors and music and right. everything that you right. need to have some fun with. Yeah. Totally, totally. All right, cool, 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 cool. Mm-hmm. Well, cool, it'll be fun. Hey, then we got the Curry Public Library, uh, 94341 3rd Street in Gold Beach is presenting the Memory Cafe. Uh, this is Memory Cafe. We'll meet the third Wednesday of every month from 1030 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Curry Public Library in Gold Beach. To register for the program, please email memorycafe at cplib.net. Or you can call 541-247-7246. And what this is, is Memory Cafe is an informal social gathering for older adults living with memory loss and their care partners. Care partners may include, but are not limited to spouses, siblings, children, or friends whose social lives are often just as affected as their loved ones. Memory Cafes are designed to be a casual, stress-free gathering to allow care partners the opportunity to relax and socialize with others in their same situation. Memory Cafe Curry will be staffed by a qualified social service provider and a library staff and volunteers. Yeah. All right. And then KCIW is doing an ongoing soapbox series. So KCIW is giving folks a chance to speak their mind on a new show. Well, semi-new show called the KCIW Soapbox. Basically, KCIW is offering two minutes of airtime to anyone who has something to say. There are a few rules, of course. There is no cussing, no slandering, no advertising. But other than that, folks can share what's on their mind. The studio is open every Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m. for people to come in and record. So come on in and tell it like it is. There you go. Mm -hmm. Bam. Get it out there. Hey, game night at the Whimsical Griffin. That's at 615 Checo Avenue by Redwood Theater. That's happening Tuesdays and Fridays, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. You got Magic the Gathering. Dungeons and Dragons, board games, and a whole lot more. All right. And then we have a PSA here for, what do you know, Meals on Wheels. There we go. They're always looking for volunteers. They are in need of volunteer drivers. Meals on Wheels delivers about 75 hot meals daily to seniors who can't get to the Checo Activity Center for the daily meals that are served there. They have both a Harbor Route and a Brookings Route, and this is a great opportunity for anyone out there who wants to give back to the community and be a friendly face, deliver a hot meal, and a little kindness to local seniors. Whether you're interested in doing this for just a day, a week, or a month, all volunteers are welcome. And if you want to get involved, you can contact Debbie at 714-423-9797. Yep. And hey, the Brookings Harbor Boy Scouts of America are always scouting for new troop members. Boys and girls both are invited. Troop 32 and Troop 4032 are now accepting new scouts as well as adults interested in volunteering. 
Scouts are able to join the troops from 5th grade to age 17. Adults are able to volunteer as long as they are over 21 years old, are able to pass a background check, and willing to spend an hour and a half completing a youth protection training course. They meet at Scout Hall 7 to 8.30 p.m. every Monday night, except on holidays. You can come meet, you can go meet the troops and learn more about what scouts can help you achieve. Scout Hall is located at 414 Azalea Park Road in Brookings. And if you want to call them on Troop 32, Scout Master is Mark Hagland, 541-661-2749. And then Troop 4032 is Scout Master Rebecca Wilson, 707-951-3647. And then Fog and Fine Art Gallery, located at Wright's Custom Framing and Art Supply at 810 Checo Avenue. The gallery features 36 local artists in a variety of mediums and a classroom to inspire new and seasoned artists with workshops. You can stop by and enjoy all that's new in the gallery, open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday. For more information on class offerings, painting demonstrations, and artists, you can always call 541 469 7900 or you can visit them on Facebook. They're at Wright's Custom Framing. Sweet. Yes, indeed. Well, we're almost done here. But hey, remember, the Bigfoot Blues Fest by the Insider of Southern Oregon Events is coming up here on July 27th, 28th. Mm -hmm. We'll be talking about that next week. Hey, well, it's time to close out this week's show. Before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to our fearless producers, Ray and Tom, for all their great work, making us look good and sound good on the radio. I want to thank you for all tuning in to this week's Insider Report. And please make sure to tune in on a daily basis to KCIW 100.7 FM and listen to all the fine shows that they have to offer. You can catch all the fantastic show podcasts, including the Insider Report, at kciw.org. And while you're there, you can check out the live streaming as well. Well, until next week, this is Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And we are signing off. Please support local businesses. Keep it real. And spread the love and the peace every chance you get. And hey, and we'll, we'll see, see you out, out there. there. Music credits for the preceding show go to kciw.org slash credits.